Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this line and wash painting of Lindisfarne Castle in Northumberland um, on the northwest coast of England, um, a few miles away from the Scottish border. It's a really wild and beautiful place and I'm using this photograph as my inspiration. The photograph has come from Pixabay. It's going to be quite a sort of sketchy, loose watercolour painting. And I started off by sketching out just the bare basic, simple shapes of the castle, the rocky outcrop um, and the beach and the horizon line. Um, once I've got my sketch to where I wanted it to be, um, I'll go in with waterproof fine liner to fill out and darken up the line work. Today I'm using a 0.8 nib um, Pigma Micron um, fine liner. As I say, it's waterproof and you want to make sure that your fine liners are waterproof if you intend to paint your line work as I do. So I made sure that my pencil sketch was as accurate as it needs to be and then it's very easy for me to just go over my pencil lines with my fine liner um, and then begin to darken up in some places and then to begin to introduce some shading using techniques of hatching and cross hatching. So I'm trying to make sure that I've got a nice contrast in the style of lines between those on the um, rocky outcrop um, and the marks that I'll eventually end up with on the castle, which is the man-made structure. So I'm trying to juxtapose natural with man-made here. So I'm darkening up some areas with the cross hatching and I'll begin to build up the shadow side which is on the left because the light is coming in from the right and hitting the right side of the building so I'm deepening the shadows on the left side and then putting in just a few suggested lines scribbly marks just to begin to suggest that little bit of beach down in the right the bottom right corner If you're interested in having a go at this in more detail, there is a full um, two part fully narrated tutorial for this on my Patreon page. Um, the link is below. There will also be the reference photographs and um, the photograph from Pixabay, the pencil sketch and the line work for you to download and copy or trace if you like to. So please follow the link below if you're interested. Today I'm using Milford 100% cotton cold pressed watercolour paper. It's £140 or 300 GSM weight. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape and my board's at an angle of 45 degrees so that gravity will help me paint. I'm just wetting the sky. Uh, most of it is wet in the sort of shape of clouds and some of it has been left dry. So then I'll end up with some soft and hard edges in my sky, which is what I'm looking for. This is cobalt blue and the brush I'm using is a size 14 Escoda synthetic mop brush. Just scrubbing in this sky, letting the paint run out on the brush and then pulling it down towards the horizon, keeping it much paler at the horizon. Then I can wash out my brush and squeeze all the water out of it so that it's just damp and then soften back here and there to create the kind of hint of the sky filled with these sort of uh, windswept, dramatic, but sort of still quite gentle sky. Just adding in a little bit more of the cobalt blue, bringing a bit more strength to it. And then softening back. And then once I get it to um, where I want it to, as quickly as possible, so that it's still looking very fresh and transparent, I'll leave it alone and then start to work on the landscape. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in the sea and I'm going to use my mottler brush. This is a Princeton Aqua Elite 
one and a half inch mottler. It's a lovely flat brush that works just as well as a Harky brush, um, but it's synthetic. And so I'm just pulling it across to very quickly put in my C, leaving some lovely sort of white unpainted paper for wave crests. So just suggesting um, with the paint. What I've done is I have put in all the outlines, of course, with my fine liner and in a, a lot of the darkest darks. So all I'm doing really is just filling out the midtones, and it's quite a sort of simple thing to do once you've um, taken the time to get the line work right, uh, both visually and tonally. So this is cobalt blue again, but I've added raw sienna, a bit of um, cad yellow and I'll dip in and out of some burnt sienna as well to create a variety of greens so as I begin to get my grasses mapped out really nice and easily then a bit more burnt sienna will give me some shadows in my grasses and I can get some darker shadows across the foreground just sort of something and nothing to try to suggest um, the close-up grasses at the front. But my detail in the foreground is not going to be very much because I don't want the viewer to sort of linger over the foreground. The important thing in this painting is the castle. So I'm hoping that everything here, including the shape of the pathway, the fence, and the fact that I'm allowing more light to be uh, maintained on the castle will mean that the focal point um, will really stand out nicely and that the paths, etc., will guide the viewer's eye through the painting. And just a suggestion of heather with alizarin crimson and cobalt violet deep to, um, as I say, just suggest the heather and that will sort of suggest this sort of late summer, um, early autumn, sunny scene. And then I'll just continue to work across the painting, adding in a few sort of darks and some texture across the foreground, just sort of something and nothing, slightly richer paint. And then I can go through with the corner of a card and um, add some grasses again, which will lean from uh, bottom left towards the castle and yet another sort of directional device to help to lead the eye to the castle. I've added a little bit more cobalt blue and a little bit more uh, burnt sienna and raw sienna and thickened up my mix a little bit. I'm now darkening the grassy areas in some places just to start to build up the layers of land. Now this is uh, quite watery raw sienna to give me that nice warm stone colour for the castle. I've already got my tones there from my line work so I just need a little bit of colour and if you'll notice that I've left a couple of areas um, unpainted on the castle and they really stand out now um, against the contrasting colour and tones around it helping to um, keep the eye on the castle. So there's just a few more details to do, maybe some dark accents here and there, just to increase the shadow here and there, and then just to sort of bring out the shape of those rocks a little bit where they're dark and in shadow. And then to put some more dark right underneath and make the castle wall really pop. And I think for a quick sketch, this one's just about finished now. Um, I want to keep it nice and fresh. I could do more to it, but what I'll probably do is take this sketch a little bit further and do a slightly more detailed but still loose painting of it one day. So I'm going to take off the tape and have a look at it and see how it looks with a clean white border. And here it is against a clean board and hopefully you can see that it's turned out quite nicely. We've got the light hitting the right side of the castle, but I think we just need to glaze over um, the grass with a bit of raw sienna, quite watery. Um, and we're gonna glaze over that top bit 
and that just lifts that whole area underneath the castle and just brightens it up a little bit. I think it just needed that and that's helped the whole painting along. So don't forget to hop over to Patreon if you're interested in the two-part demo of this. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.